Thumb picks are one of the most versatile tools that you can use on an acoustic guitar. But there are so many, where do you even start? Stop what you're doing, because on today's show, I'm gonna clear the air about thumb picks. I'll be telling you about my favorites. I'm gonna prove to you that for a good thumb pick, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg, and I'll be answering the number one thumb pick question that everyone is scared to ask. Hey, TAC family, this is episode 262 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is packed full of inspiration and fun, designed to help you get more progress, fulfillment, and joy from your guitar journey. Throughout today's episode, I'll be sprinkling in some acoustic news you can use, which includes a divine guitar comedy, the caretaking of a mojo-infused guitar, and much, much more. Plus, you're gonna meet TAC family member Kaylin. Kaylin just started her guitar journey, and she's gonna share a story with you that proves how important consistency is to, well, your overall progress and your enjoyment of the guitar. We're gonna get to all that in a moment, but first, thumbs up for these thumb picks. I've got 10 of them I'm gonna share with you, and we're gonna do this in a true countdown fashion. Starting at number 10, which is a pretty good thumb pick, and working to number one, my absolute favorite thumb pick of all time, and no, it is not the most expensive on the list. My favorite thumb pick costs a buck 69. Yes, a buck 69. We'll get there in a moment, but let's start off in the number 10 position. Coming in at number 10 is the National NP8. This is the thumb pick that comes to mind when you think of a thumb pick. Yes, it's a generic thumb pick. It works fantastic. It is a great first thumb pick for anybody wanting to foray into the arena of thumb picking. The cost on this thumb pick is 11 bucks for a four pack, which breaks down to 275 a piece. You can use that leftover quarter to get yourself a gumball out of the gumball machine. Now, all the pricing for the thumb picks that I'm gonna mention today comes from Elderly Instruments. This is not a sponsored episode. I don't get a kickback from any sales made through this episode. I'm quite simply saying that I got the pricing from Elderly because I do believe Elderly has the best selection of thumb picks, period. They got the mainstream ones, they got the off the radar ones, they have all the ones in between. I just wanted to make mention of that in case you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm gonna go get some of these thumb picks. Make sure to check out Elderly Instruments at elderly.com. Okay, moving on to the number nine spot. Coming in at number nine is the Fred Kelly Slick Pick. This is a great thumb pick if you're looking for one that has a smaller blade that is less cumbersome. If you tried out a thumb pick in the past and you thought, wow, that, sound, that, that feels very strange. It makes my guitar sound weird because the picking an angle is strange. The Fred Kelly Slick Pick is one that you should most certainly try. Uh, this pick comes in at a whopping 75 cents. You still get a quarter left over to get a gumball and you get a pretty nice thumb pick as well. Coming in at number eight is the Herco Flat Pick Thumb Pick. For all you flat pickers out there that love hanging on to your flat pick but want a little bit more freedom, this thumb pick is a fantastic option because it literally is a flat pick with like a loop around it that allows you to, well, put it on your thumb and use it as a thumb pick. My one gripe with this particular thumb pick is that the band that goes around your thumb isn't all that strong. So if you find yourself to be an aggressive thumb picker, this may not be the thumb pick for you. However, if you have a lighter touch, if you're looking for that comfort of a flat pick, but the freedom to use your other fingers, this may very, this may very well be the thumb pick for you. It comes in at a whopping $1.39. No gumball on this one. Okay, coming in at number seven is the most expensive thumb pick on my list. And I almost didn't include this thumb pick, but I had to because I've used it in the past and I really do enjoy it. But I don't think it's worth the price. I don't mean that it's a bad pick. I just don't think it's worth how much it costs. It's 40 bucks. Coming in at number seven is the blue chip thumb pick, the JD Crow model specifically. Uh, I do like this thumb pick. I feel like it's nice and sturdy on my thumb. I feel like the blade is, is solid. It produces fantastic tone, but it is 40 bucks. And to be honest, the rest of the thumb picks on this list are about five bucks and below. So I think you've got plenty of options, but I did wanna make mention of this because I feel like for an aggressive thumb picker, somebody that generally has a heavy thumb, this could be a really good option and something that you might want to try. Okay, coming in at number six is one of the best looking thumb picks on this list, the Dunlop Calico. 
Now, you can get Dun Dunlop thumb picks in just plain white, you can get them in Ivoroid, but the Calico steals the show because it just looks awesome. It's like a, a, a tortoise shelly type material, but a little bit louder in terms of color. Um, I do like this thumb pick though, in terms of its functionality, it has a little bit of a bigger blade on it. So that is something that will take some getting used to, but for a uh, buck 49, you get a pretty good looking thumb pick. Okay, uh, I'm gonna break up the countdown a little bit. We have five more thumb picks to go over, but I wanna answer the number one question about thumb picks that everyone is scared to ask, myself included, at least when I started using thumb picks. How do you put them on? Uh, go ahead and take a look at this video. What you're gonna wanna do with the thumb pick is place it with the fat blade side down. Don't put it with the fat blade side up because that will feel really strange and you won't get the drive, you won't get the force that you need. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, you can no longer be scared to ask that question. I had it, as I mentioned, when I first started and you maybe have it right now and fortunately enough for all of us, I've answered it so we can move on with the countdown. Coming in at number five is the Dunlop Altex thumb pick, Altex, I should say that properly, U-L-T-E-X. This thumb pick comes in at a whopping $1.29. This is a damn good thumb pick for the price. The Altex material is one of my favorite materials. In fact, the Dunlop Altex flat pick is one of my favorite uh, generic uh, flat picks and the thumb pick is just as good. It produces fantastic tone. The thumb pick is incredibly comfortable and I think you'll find that the Altex material doesn't wear down as quickly as some of the other plastics that are used in some of these other thumb picks. Moving on to, I almost said episode, moving on to position number four. Coming in at number four is the Golden Gate Extra Heavy Thumb Pick. I need to be clear here. I specifically cited the extra heavy thumb pick because it's got this extra little notch on the band that gives you that much more of a sturdy feeling. This thumb pick is for folks that are playing dobro. It's for folks that are playing with a very, very heavy and aggressive thumb because this, this thumb pick will not twist on your thumb. It just won't. That little extra knobby keeps it nice and uh, solid on your thumb and you can really push hard with this particular thumb pick. Uh, the Golden Gate Extra Heavy comes in at, oh, look out, uh, $3.25. So yeah, it's a little bit more pricey than some of the other ones I've mentioned, but I do feel that it is worth it because of this, the, the uh, security that you feel with it. Uh, coming in at number two. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. I can't get to number two because I got to do number three. Uh, coming in at number three is the Black Mountain Pick. Now I'm talking about the first one that they came out with. It's got the red band and it's got the black kind of flat pick looking uh, blade on it. This thumb pick is extremely comfortable. The band is actually spring loaded, meaning it, it kind of clamps itself on your thumb, not in an uncomfortable way. It's actually quite a comfortable thumb pick, which is why it's in the number three spot. This is a great crossover thumb pick. If you found yourself or if you find yourself using a flat pick 90% of the time and you're thinking, you know what? I think I'm gonna try out this thumb pick thing. Get yourself a Black Mountain pick. I, I don't think you will be disappointed and I think you will find it to be the easiest crossover into the thumb picking world. Uh, the Black Mountain picks, the standard is about $5.95. So again, another quote unquote expensive thumb pick, but when you compare it to the blue chip, it's really, it's really not expensive at all. Okay, now on to the number two spot and coming in at number two is the Golden Gate Ivoroid thumb pick. This pick is the quintessential thumb pick. It does have a longer blade on it, so it can feel a little bit cumbersome if you're not used to thumb picks, but I gotta tell you, it's in the number two spot for a reason. Great tone, a high degree of comfort, and Ivoroid is like the coolest material. It just is. I just love the striping, I love the vintage look of it. I don't know, I just it just captures my eye every single time. Uh, the Golden Gate Ivoroid Thumb Pick comes in at $2.50. Yes, indeed, you'll have leftover change for two gumballs from the gumball machine. On to the number one spot. Coming in at number one is the Dunlop Zookies Thumb Pick, Z-O-O-K-I-E-S. These thumb picks come in at $1.69 a piece. 
These are the best thumb picks ever made, period. And I'll tell you why. There's a very specific reason. The blade of the thumb pick is angled. So you hit the strings square, regardless of your uh, picking hand position. All of these other flat blade thumb picks, you kind of hit the strings at an angle and it, it can create this bizarre squeak, this bizarre feeling of friction, not the Zuki's. The Zuki's blade is angled so you hit the strings square. In fact, Zuki's offers three different angles for their thumb picks, a 10 degree, a 20 degree, and a 30 degree. The pick that I like the most of the entire Zuki's lineup is the medium sized 20 degree angle pick, the Zuki's M20. If you've ever had problems with thumb picks in the past, they felt weird, try out the Zuki's. I think they may change your perspective on thumb picking. Thumb picking, finger picking with a thumb pick whatever it is. Uh, so those are my 10 favorite. In the comments below, let me know your favorite thumb pick. Maybe it's one that's on my list. Maybe it's one that I didn't mention at all. I'd love for the comments to serve as a, a, a resource for anybody looking to try out thumb picks and maybe gather a list of options. So again, go ahead and put your favorite thumb pick in the comments below. Okay, uh, actually one more question. Uh, did this episode, did this countdown inspire, to tr inspire you to try out thumb picking? If that's the case, you can let me know that in the comments as well. Okay, moving on to your first dose of acoustic news you can use. You've got to check this out. Grit Laskin did a Dante's Divine Comedy themed set of guitars. And wow, these guitars are stunning, just stunning. They caught my eye because of the inlay work. And then when I found out it was based after Dante's Divine Comedy, my jaw was on the floor. Uh, really cool stuff. I wanted to show that to you. Let's talk about consistency and how it has a profound impact on your guitar journey. How eager you are to play the guitar, how much fun you have while you're playing the guitar and how much progress you achieve. That is all linked to consistency. Now, I just wrapped up a Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90-day progress party where the TAC family gets together, we set goals for the next 90 days, we talk about our guitar routines, and, and during these parties, I get a chance to interview TAC family members, one of which is TAC family member Kaylin, who spoke directly to consistency. In fact, she starts out with a story. Now, Kaylin just started playing guitar. She starts out with a story about her trying to play mandolin and why she gave it up and why she picked up the guitar and what quite possibly is the most important element when it, element when it comes to her continuing to play the guitar. So I, this is still my first 90 days. So I only picked up the okay. guitar two months ago. And the oh, first wow. day my partner just, cause I had been trying to learn how to play mandolin similar to the the kind of the purpose of the TAC is I would pick it up for a day, put it down, wouldn't touch it for like three to six mm. months. And then mandolin, sure. I was really struggling with because it's such a fast instrument. So to learn how to play it slowly, it sounds terrible. It's very difficult to get excited about it. And so my <laughs> partner recommended that I just noodle on a guitar. And I spent more time that night just kind of making sounds with it than I had in years trying the mandolin. And so then I found uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge that night, signed up for the 30 day program the next day. And I'm now two months in. So I've done the 30 days to play and then the five days to get started sessions. Nice. So I'm really still with my goals. My main goal is just to still be playing. Um, so that was my 30 nice. day win was I was still playing because it was the first time in my 38 years that I've ever played music for more than two days in a row. And good that, for you. Yeah. And so that's just like talking about wins. I think just the consistency and like keeping music in your life has been so exciting for me. And so that was my main goal still the continue to play. Yes. Being consistent can be your goal. I say this a lot and I want to really zoom it into focus here because I think when we talk about setting goals for playing guitar, Oftentimes it's, I want to learn this song. I want to learn this technique. I want to play an open mic. I want to play in front of my family. These are all worthy goals. I'm not saying they are not worthy goals, but I think a lot of times being consistent or maintaining your guitar routine gets overlooked as a goal. 
it's a very important goal. So if your goal over the next 90 days through the end of the year is to be more consistent, that's a worthy goal and something that, well, you should celebrate if you achieve it, when you achieve it. Now, I, our, our, <laughs> bleh, my, my talk with Kaylin was not over there. In fact, there's a couple more things that I wanna mention that I wanna share with you from our little chat that we did during that 90-day progress party. I wanna, t I wanna tell you about the power of 10 minutes. Rather, I don't wanna tell you, I want Kaylin to tell you. You know, she talked about 10 minutes being the perfect amount of time for her and that it usually stems into much more. But she also pairs her guitar routine habit, playing 10 minutes per day with an anchor moment. Something that cues her to stop what she's doing and play the guitar. But for the 30 days, that was, you know, really big for my brain to take in, just like trying to learn music for the first time. So 10 minutes was perfect. That's what I needed. I could practice the skill and move on. And now I can play longer than that. I've done a couple hour sessions, mostly half hour ones. But I think for me is just keeping it at that 10 minutes. And then my anchor point is the, I work from home. So I close my work computer and then start up the, the guitar <laughs> computer. And nice. that's a, a nice mental shift to kind of close out a work day and move into that. I love that, closing the work computer and opening the guitar computer, kind of that mental shift and knowing that you're committing to 10 minutes at the minimum, which is doable for a lot of us, that little 10 minute window of time. There's one more little segment that I wanna share with you from Kaylin and I's conversation, and it has to do with positivity having a huge impact. You know, I, I consider myself a pretty positive person and I want you to be positive about your guitar playing. There's always negative elements if we look for it. We can play better, we can play faster, we can play cleaner. We can always find the negative, but I want you to take pause and find the positive because the positive carries weight. The positive creates this wonderful momentum that is hard to stop and that momentum carries out throughout your guitar journey, throughout your guitar routine. And it can even impact other people and rewrite negative narratives that you're telling yourself. Case in point, here's Kaylin talking about her guitar routine and playing guitar with her family, whom always said that there was no musical talent within the family at all. Check this out. I come from a family that like, since I was a tiny kid, everyone in my family is like, we're not musical. We're not musical. We have no musical talent. None of us can sing. And that everyone said it jokingly, but I think that really built a foundation that I was like, oh, I shouldn't even try, you know? And I think Tony's Acoustic Challenge, your focus on small wins, not getting negative and just looking for that progress over time has like helped me reshape that narrative and that story. And that is something really exciting. And this past week I was visiting my parents and I got a little travel guitar to bring and I got my parents to sing with me on the porch, just strumming really basically. And I think that also was just, I was stoked. It was so, so much fun to be able to bring that and send a video to my nieces and nephews. And so I'm gonna be trying to <laughs> change that story as well for, for all of us, which is really, really cool. Now I wrote something down kind of as a, as a closing comment about that conversation. Consistency leads to progress over time. And progress over time is the most profound gift that you can give yourself on your guitar journey. And that is accessible to all of us whenever we want it. All we have to do is be consistent. Case in point, Kaylin and her guitar journey thus far. Uh, best of luck to you, Kaylin, on your guitar journey. It sounds like you're doing a hell of a job and I just know that you're going to accomplish whatever goal that you have set in front of you. I know that one of her other goals is to learn the John Prine song, Souvenirs. And uh, it's a pretty awesome goal. And I'm just super excited that uh, her guitar journey is starting off on the right foot. Now, speaking of the TAC family, uh, they are working on a guitar lick challenge today. Every day within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we focus on one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement, technique, guitar licks, improvisation, rhythm guitar, and chord transitions. Today is Tuesday. The TAC family, as I mentioned, is working on a guitar lick, and here's what they're working on. Today's guitar lick challenge is entitled Tin Man. In fact, everything within TAC this week has a Wizard of Oz theme. You've got Tin Man, you've got Scarecrow, and the Cowardly Lion. And each of these individuals has a very sad, sad story. 
And that's a great segue into the musical theme this week, and that is open D minor tuning. D minor, the saddest of all keys. Somebody said that once in a great movie. Anyways, yes, the, the musical theme this week within TAC is open D minor tuning, and there's a technique paired along with that as well, and that is the dead thumb. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in today's guitar lick. So without further ado, here is Tin Man. Kind of a spooky, sad lick. Between the dead thumb and open D minor tuning, it's a recipe for ultimate sadness. Now, if you want to learn this lick note for note, all you have to do, TAC fam, is go ahead and log in. This is your challenge for today. It's Tuesday. Tuesday is Guitar Lick Challenge Day. Just go ahead and hit Start Challenge off of your home screen, and boom, you'll be right in the teaching video. Once you get comfortable with it, you can move on to the Play Along video, and don't forget to click on the tab icon in the lower right-hand corner, and you can open up the tab in a separate window, and this way you've got the teaching, you've got the tab, you got the Play Along, Boom, bam, biggity, you've got the whole darn thing. Okay, so this lick in a musical context. How can you actually use this? And I kept thinking about this. This isn't some sort of, you know, solo lick that you would use, although I think where this shines is solo guitar. If you listen to any of the old-time blues players, they use this technique, the dead thumb, where literally the thumb just rides along that low string. A nice, steady pace. It doesn't seem like much, but it creates this wonderful bed of rhythm that's key-centric because it's, well, within the key, it's a D note, so it's just this constant D note. They call it pedaling the bass, or dead thumb. And what that allows you to do is play melodies over it. And this is exactly what this lick does. It maintains the dead thumb and allows you to play melodies over it. So this is an example of just one melody that you could play with this particular guitar lick with this particular style. So what I'm gonna do is use it in a musical context. I'm gonna musically use this guitar lick so that you can see that dead thumb in action. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the lick and then keep that dead thumb going to maintain the rhythm and then I'll play the lick again. Now, what I want you to think of as I'm doing this is, okay, this is one way to add melody. How else could I add melody while I'm playing this lick or while I'm playing in this particular tuning? Yes, I went off the rails a little bit there towards the end, but I wanted to do that to emphasize the fact that you could take a small portion of this lick and repeat it to great effect. And I wanna encourage you to do that very thing. I also wanna encourage you to not play this lick the way I presented it. This is a wonderful way to start getting familiar with open D minor tuning. This is a wonderful way to start learning how to accompany yourself in fingerstyle guitar. Keep that nice steady bass going, keep that dead thumb going, and start adding melody notes on top of it. Moving on to our final dose of acoustic news you can use, the first story that I have for you involves Charlie Parr and Spider John Kerner. Spider John Kerner. I always have a goofy time pronouncing his last name. Well, anyways, I gotta find the story here. Charlie just Inherited, inherited is not the right word. He is caretaking Spider John Kerner's 12 string. Here's what he had to say about it. The first time I saw Spider John Kerner play was in the early 80s at the Viking Bar on the West Bank of Minneapolis. It was, and still is, hard to describe how I felt about the experience. No one played like John, and certainly no one I'd ever seen played like that. I saw him any time I could after that, often once a week if he was playing, and hurried home to play my 12 string in a very poor imitation. Over the years, the biggest and still most important lesson I took away from watching John play and listening to his records was that I could find my own voice on the guitar and play those old songs in my own way, and that's been worth everything to me. Having the opportunity to play alongside John and share stages and the occasional drink has always been an honor to me, even though it took me years to work up the courage to talk to him. He called me up the other day and gave me one of his guitars. 
I don't have the vocabulary to tell you what that means to me. He wants that guitar to get played at shows and recorded in the studio, and I am honored to be its steward and overprotective guardian. I'm looking forward to making a couple videos about the guitar and John so you can hear for yourself the story of its tran transformation from six string to 12, how the word Gretsch is misspelled, its theft and recovery, and anything else Spider John wants to tell us. Thank you, Spider John. I'm very grateful for you. Okay, first of all, for guitar geeks, this is amazing. This celebrated guitar goes to another celebrated musician. It clearly has stories to tell, and it sounds like we're going to hear them at some point in time. I am very much looking forward to figuring out and learning why the Gretsch name is misspelled on the headstock. I'm sure there, there's a funny tale behind that, but I will await that with bated breath, as I'm sure we all will. Super excited for Charlie to tell those stories alongside Spider John, if that is indeed the case. Okay, moving on. I've got two more things for you, maybe three. We'll see. We'll see how crazy I get. Uh, next up is another podcast I wanted to tell you about. I did a podcast episode. Uh, rather, I did an episode about podcasts a couple of weeks ago, and there's another one I just found, uh, Greg Cox Chewing the Gristle podcast. You've probably seen Greg demo guitars. You've probably seen him on Instagram. He is hilarious. He's just hilarious. He's like um, if Anchorman got crossed with a shredding guitarist. It's, it's like somehow the combination is there for Greg. Uh, he has a wide vocabulary, one in which is unmatched. I've tried to come up with crazy words. Greg, I feel, has me beat every single time. And his podcast is an extension of that. So make sure to check out his podcast, Chewing the Gristle. I've got yet another Norman Blake story for you. A couple weeks ago, I talked about him being inducted into the Bluegrass Hall of Fame. I talked about pre-war guitars issuing a limited run of 12 Norman Blake signed and endorsed guitars. And now I have another Norman Blake story, but not really, spe not specifically. This comes from the Songbirds Museum. And I actually can't, now that I said it out loud, I can't remember where Songbirds is. If you remember, if you've been there, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. It's a musical instrument museum. And they do this thing called the Vault Sessions. And I've seen uh, Tommy Emanuel play guitars there. I've seen Sierra Hall play guitars there in these Vault Sessions. I've seen, I, I think I saw one with Vince Gill. Anyways, they bring fantastic musicians in to play the instruments that they have at the museum. And the one that stopped me dead in my tracks was the one with Norman Blake. Not only because he's a great player, not only because he's, he has such wild connections to all sorts of musicians, but because he's also what I would call an expert when it comes to tone and vintage instruments. Here's just a small snippet of the Songbirds Vault Sessions that has Norman Blake as the center of its focus. He said to me, you want to ride over to Nashville? I'm going to play on a Johnny Cash session. You want to ride over to Nashville with me? And I didn't have anything else to do. I said, sure. So I rode over there. We walked in the studio and of course she was there. And immediately when she saw me, she says to John, she says, John says, this is a fellow I've told you about. Norman Blake says he plays with the dobro and the guitar. And um, he says, he turned right around and he never, of course, he'd never heard me play a note, you know, and no, didn't know me from anybody, just walked in off the street. And uh, he said, well, if you get a dobro, I'll use you tomorrow. And so I borrowed a dobro, I believe, from Buck Graves, Uncle Josh, you know, and uh, I started recording with him the next day, and it went on for, off and on for 40 years, <laughs> you know, so... And on those vintage notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, oh yes, but first we do have to take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, oh man, next week. I have to rest up for next week's episode. Next week, we'll be learning some guitar lessons from Billy Strings. We'll be taking a look at his playing style, his approach to music, and pulling out some little, whoa, some little nuggets that you can apply to your own playing. It won't be learn a Billy Strings song note for note. It will be 
looking at his playing and saying, wow, that's something I can apply to my own playing. That's happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. I cannot wait. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. But before I let you go, please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it for yourself, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing a consistent guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thanks again for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers, guitar geeks unite.